we have the coolest guests ever. Um, they're definitely in our top two in the sports power couple arena. They could be number one if we made stricter parameters, but right now they reside right at number two because we love lists. We do, and we're kind of hoping by the end of the show they're going to be our new best friends. Yes, that is the goal. All right, so we've got two people coming up now. We've got no more time to just riff. All right, fine. All right, we're going to bring up World Cup winning, Olympic gold medal winning. Let's start here with Sue Bird. Thank you. WNBA champ with the Seattle Storm. Four-time Olympic gold medalist. We'll get some high fives along the way. Really sports it up. And oh, hot. her yeah. assistant, Megan Rapino, <laughs> Olympic gold medalist, World Cup champ, U.S. Yep. Women's National no Soccer out. Team. And two birds assistant. Bring it, bring it. It's so hot up here right now. I don't know if it the is. sweater was the right choice. Yeah, you're going to want to take it off down right now. a little yeah, bit. Yeah, right if I had a shirt go. on underneath, I would be stripping. Yeah. No more, that's it. So Can you actually explain that before we start? Why you are Sue's <sighs> assistant? <laughs> there, was, there was a call that happened. I think I was maybe a late addition or something. Weren't you up in Santa Barbara, too? And they just yeah. felt... Yeah, basically it was She was assistant. Mrs. Burden. Yeah, oh, Barbara. Mrs. Burden. That's what it yeah. was. Yeah, I got at a it. hotel. Ms. Bird, yeah. would you like? I was like, I think they're talking to you, not me. Yeah, I was like, she want was killing anything? It. Killing it at the pool. <laughs> that ain't me. <laughs> yeah, I was fine with that. That was that was nice. And th there was some kind of conference call, and I think my name keep kept being brought up, and Bo, and it was like, oh, is is Megan? Is that Sue's assistant? Sure. Is. Yes. It's like. <laughs> World Cup now. winning. <laughs> and yeah. as someone who has right. a last name that's always mispronounced, it's Budig, by the way. Like, can yeah. you give me some iterations of Before you how became a student? This is so shocking. <laughs> like, to me, Rapino is pretty easy. Yeah. I know. So I don't think that's difficult. Yeah. Nobody ever gets it. Rapino. Rapino. I still get Rapino when people, like, mention you. Mention, yeah. So yeah. Uh, All right, but, but I need, like, a thing or an, I don't know. So, I, I, a, a little known fact about Kate and I is that we actually first met at an ESPNW summit. That's right. So Ooh. this is origin stories. This is kind of like a little anniversary weekend or something working. <laughs> so happy times. we could join you. But <laughs> so I that's our origin story, and I know that's a major tease because I'm giving you nothing. But we would really maybe like to hear a little bit of your origin story. Yes, please. Give us like give us the juice, <laughs> the dirt. It is. This is my. Let's go for it. Um, <laughs> we actually first. I first met at like a USOC media days yeah. summit kind of thing. Um, we have not the same agent, but basically the same in the same um, in the same group. So my agent, Dan, we were sort of passing and doing all these things. And he was like, oh, you got to meet Sue. And we've obviously played in the same city, but we had never, never met. Yeah. Never met. So I made a really stupid joke. I think Really stupid. Really. <laughs> whoa, 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 I was a little bit nervous. Well, I, so this USOC thing, it's like, humongo media day for all the Olympians. It's where they get all their content that you're going to see on TV. It's like a year prior to the Olympics. So I was in like full uniform, but like full makeup, hair down. Yeah. Just it was not, like it this never, from here up and then yeah, like and then full basketball uniform. from there down. She's like, hey, what's up? How's it going? She's like, I'm getting ready for a game. I was like, <laughs> yeah. It was, it was just like that too. That's not even exaggerating. I was like, I, was like, I basically just walked away cool. like... <laughs> <laughs> this is not good. And then we had to let like, go, but then I was nervous. As, you know, you yeah, had yeah. to let like, go. And then then we didn't meet again until... Yeah, fast forward like yeah. eight, nine months. Fast forward, we're at the Olympics. Um, we got out just a little bit earlier than we thought we were. <laughs> Most of the team had gone home, but there was a few of us that went uh, to Rio and just tried to, tried to enjoy it a little bit and saw a few games. Like I said, was hanging out. We had kind of the same agent, so we were all hanging out. Saw a few of your games. Mm -hmm. Went to your after party. Hit me in the DM. Oh, <laughs> oh is that? No, nah, not like that. Slid into the DM. Yeah, well, I, like mm, I like did that. not slide into the DM. She didn't slide. <laughs> I she did, but I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> sauntered right in. Yeah, just, just sauntered. No, it was, it was actually for a purpose. It was actually when um, uh, our team had just worn the black shirts and kind of made a stand, if you will. And obviously, Megan had kneeled, you know. Um, wait, after that, you kneeled, actually. I think it was after. Yeah, it was after. Yeah. So anyways, we were chatting about that. It was uh, actually just... It was that summer. I mean, that July, yeah, there that was... Summer. Yeah, yeah, you know, the five cops were murdered, and there was a bunch of people shot, and it was just sort of this big... And WNBA had kind of waged waged into it very heavily. So I was like, that is so cool. Blah, yeah. Blah. yeah. Anyway, Sue likes to think that I 
Slid away. And then I got I actually got hurt at the Olympics. Um, there was one game I got hurt, and I really wasn't sure it was my knee. I really wasn't sure it was going to happen. She was like, oh, is everything okay? Aww. And then eventually started texting, and then we got back to Seattle, and the rest is history, as they say. Okay. All right, so you guys mentioned briefly some of that activism. Um, and I think from an outside perspective, it seems like, Megan, you've been – because it's an individual at times, like more out there and vocal about certain things and, and Sue often being more reserved mm -hmm. about that activism. What, what have you two learned from each other on that front? I've probably learned to maybe just take a second, think about things. <laughs> <laughs> just, a, just a split second longer. Um, so I think you're much more thoughtful and patient in that way. But I think we both, I think we both at the heart of it feel the same way about these issues and want to be involved. Uh, I think we just have different ways of going about it, which I think is wonderful. I think oftentimes if you're not doing it like the way I'm doing it, then it's like, oh, that's not enough. And it's like, well, everybody can't do it that way. There's so many different paths that people have to take that are impactful in, in different ways. So um, I think at the heart of it, we both sort of feel the same and, and want to be involved and, and have very strong opinions about it. We get in not arguments against each other, but we'll just yeah. conversations all the time about whatever that. Well, she's obviously very like passionate about certain things. And I'm not that I'm not, but I'm, I like she said a little more like I'll think about it more and kind of, so I'm constantly playing devil's advocate at her, even if I don't believe it. Right. <laughs> I'll just kind of yeah, like, I'm like, like just making her stronger. I'll be like, well, what about the, you know? J yeah. So it's, it's, it's always good conversation. Well, we talked about that briefly last night. We had dinner last night. Again, we're going to be best friends. <laughs> and, um, I, I, my takeaway was wow we just sat next to two of the the biggest female athletes in the world and in particular sue i was like she's so chill like you would never think that you're sitting next to one of the best basketball players in the world you're just so relaxed and kate was like well that kind of is emblematic of the sport like this to energy some degree, playing in the wmba versus like because it, that's flown under the radar compared to some of the exposure that the, the soccer team is. I mean, have you guys... Did, I'm, sorry. I'm just curious, you know, like, is that even emblematic of your personalities as well? Because, like, Megan, I was so pumped to meet you because I've been following you, and I'm like, oh, we're going to, like, jump together and you know, like my sparkly food. <laughs> I do and love She your definitely likes your sparkly food. <laughs> I saw him last night, and I was like, I'm sorry, what? I might be able to do that heel, but I don't know. Oh, the question was right. Right. Oh, got it. Yeah. <laughs> emblematic, actually, the like the outside perspective is like the boots. You know, Megan being kind of like yeah. the more fiery, bouncing around one versus Sue. Is that actually the reality? I think so. Yeah, okay. definitely. Yeah, I'm way more chill. Yeah, she is. <laughs> she um, totally is. I'm and part of, part of that's sorry. Oh, please go. I just said I'm she just called herself a rational. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, so the background for you guys in your different sports, I'm curious because. Sue, like, you've been in locker rooms so much more with, like, women of color mm -hmm. in the WNBA. How has that shaped your perspective both on how women's sports are perceived by the outside world and how the WNBA lands right. in the media and, and fans? Um, and all, how has it shaped your perspective? Oh, it's, I mean, since I can remember, it's I've probably shaped who I am as a person. You know, I think about... Growing up, I always played on AAU teams. Um, so I grew up in Long Island, New York, and there was maybe one black family in Syosset at the time. But I was always in the summers, you know, playing with my AAU teams, which was based out of Queens. And so I was the minority. And then I actually switched schools, and that was really a turning point, I think, in terms of just seeing other, other cultures. And actually, you know, dot, 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 I ended up playing in Europe for many years. Um, which I've always said helped me become just, uh, just open my eyes, you know, there's different cultures out there and just because it's different from yours doesn't mean it's wrong and you have to learn to respect it. Cause there's a lot of stuff in Russia that I do not get, but I learned to appreciate that this is what they do and how they do it. Same can be said in, in my basketball life. I think I got to see things firsthand, um, whether it was, you know, people's family lives, you know, what, what they were like, um, how they were treated both on and off the court. Then in college, you know, uh, my roommate was Swing Cash. My classmates were, were two other African Americans. Um, so just seeing them kind of go through, we're, we're on the same journey, but we're not. Like we're at the same school, kind of sort of experiencing the same things, but in a totally different way. And, and just having conversations with them. I mean, if you know Swin, I just heard a woo, so you definitely do. There's a woo out there. Um, oh, that was from <laughs> Sarah Spain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's great. So she's very vocal and has, you know, a, a lot of opinions and sees things. And it was always great to, to converse in that way. And um, all that did was, you know, br open my eyes to things. I got to see things. And I, I don't understand how people don't see it. But that's because it was, you know, yeah. it, was, it was in my 
in my face all the time. Wait, if I can ask a quick follow-up, Megan, like, what along your journey toward being vocal and being more of an activist, like, what, what are some of the key milestones there for you? Um, I, I think just in general, being a, a gay woman in sports, a gay female athlete, um, there's some things that you have to overcome with that. But I think w having always had the main thing sort of be the national team and representing your country and what that means and everybody, you know, loves America and loves to love America. And I think it's just, it started to become very clear to me, like, what does that really mean? What does that mean to me? And what are we representing? What, what do we, you know, sort of want to represent? What do we want to talk about? I think it, I realized very early on the impact that we had and the popularity that we had as a team. And I was kind of like, oh, I can like leverage that or use that to talk about things that, that I think is what represents America and what represents me, actually, and, and other players on my team. Well, and, and speaking of platforms, and this is for both of you, I, I'm, I'm curious what your reaction is when you hear comments like female athletes and women's sports teams need to up their platform to expand the audience, to expand the viewership, to yeah. get more. I, I, yeah, like I just. <laughs> yeah, what's your reaction that? to that? <laughs> <sighs> it's like it's like we have to do everything like yeah. we have to you know be outrageous and totally calm at the same time and you have to you know be this and be that at the same time it's kind of like simultaneous you have to do it all and pander to all and be responsible for all and grow the viewership and you know be in charge of marketing getting people to come to the games and be nice and you know it's like how much can you know one team or one person or you know sort of one one person actually do? But it's frustrating sometimes. I feel like it's just it's never enough in a way. It's like whatever you do, there's there's something off with it. Yeah. Any yeah. input on that? No, I agree. No. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. So kind of spreading it to it's a wellness Very angle for a second. Um, Catherine likes to make things wellnessy. I know. Yeah. It's kind of what I do. <laughs> so from a, a wellness aspect, I'm curious, as professional athletes, where your 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 vessel, your meat suit, is like absolutely part of. I like that meat suit. Yeah, you never heard that. You, you got <laughs> to like you wear the meat dress, suit you got the in meat order suit. to yeah. perform. But for me, I'm curious, you know, because all humans kind of humming under the surface have some kind of insecurity or body image issues, or you know, my am, am I taking care of myself to look a certain way or to perform a certain way? So what's the marriage for both of you between, you know, I have to treat myself and take care of myself a certain way because this is what I do for a living and I need to be optimal versus, you know, the emotional aspect of it and how you mentally feel in your meat suit? Layers to that. I know. Um, you take this one first. Well, I think, <laughs> like, later in my career, um, like now, uh, I, had, <laughs> <laughs> I really had to figure out, like, you know, what it was that, how I wanted it to look an end, if you will. And part of that, I had to change my diet, you know, and, yeah. and with that, it was basically, all right, I need to control, we talked about this last night, I need to control everything I possibly can here so that when I get on the floor, I don't have to worry about this, you know, I, this, this will, it'll, I'll always have this to kind of rely on. And what I mean by that is, if you eat right, you do your workouts the right way, yeah, the byproduct is that you probably look pretty good, but you actually feel good, and you don't have to worry about, because when you have an injury or any kind of nagging anything, it affects your game. Yeah. So you just want to kind of check all these boxes so you don't have to worry about that. And like I said, the byproduct is that you do look good and, and you do feel good, but I think more than anything, it's just more, I know I have to do this to be good on the court. And, and that's really where all the drive comes from. Yeah. I don't know if that answered that. But how have you, how has your relationship impacted, or how have you impacted each other and how either training-wise, like yeah. insights from different sports, nutrition-wise, have you guys had those conversations and made certain tweaks because of it? Yeah. I mean, I know yeah. Megan rebounds for Sue, which yeah. is a basketball player. I can yeah. just, like, find amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I actually really do love hoop, it. Passing it yeah. out. <sighs> Arm really like, are you a bounce <laughs> passer? Well, yeah. I think I've become, like, really strict in a lot of ways. And actually, just to add on to the last question, um, but I'm also, like, very lenient. I'm, I'm kind to myself, you know? I, yes, I want to do this, and I want to eat right but I say it's like the 80-20 rule. Like 80% of the time on it, but then I, you gotta give yourself the 20 and be nice. Like I had pizza last night, so what? <laughs> like I'm not, I don't wanna like get up and have to like run it off, yeah. Yeah. you know? Pizza. Like just be yeah. kind. I think that's a huge element of it to like be nice to yourself. You miss a shot, it's okay. Don't well, Megan has to chase up. it yeah. down, so. Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> I was like, be kind to me. <laughs> <laughs> but I think Make she's, uh, 
Well, I'll let you answer. I don't want to speak for you, but I think my strictness is kind of. Yeah, I've got a lot more discipline since uh, <laughs> since is that real? Sue. Yeah, oh, yeah. So, like the first time <laughs> she like cooked dinner for me, she's like, "Oh, it's a great recipe. Sweet, you know? It's this soup." And I was like, "Oh, shit." Sure. Because <laughs> like, you know, what the hell's in this? Yeah. It's like, oh, there's pasta in it, and there's all kinds of carbs and this and that. <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay. She didn't want to like let her crazy out right in the not, beginning. Not in the she beginning. didn't say anything. So I was like, how am I supposed to know that you you know? That's not on the plan or whatever. <laughs> Sue works with this amazing woman, uh, Susan Borcher, Susan yeah. Borcher? Um, who she had worked with before, um, former college player. She played in the WNBA, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but she does this whole, like, eating plan, workout, this and that. So I was like, yeah, I want to get in on that. That sounds – I mean, this looks good. So <laughs> I feel like let's, like, get this over here a little bit. Um, but I think, I think too, as I've started to get a little bit older, obviously I've had some, some injuries. And I think, you know, kind of when I met her, it was a year after I'd come off my uh, ACL injury. And just like, okay, this body, I need to, like, take care of it because it's not just going to, like, be out here being an iron woman on its own. I think I break down a little bit. So uh, I think just seeing you and seeing the, the discipline that you had and, and sort of what it has done for you. And you sort of went through those couple of hard years and yeah. kind of came out. Um, feeling a lot better, so I was like, "Well, I guess I'll just try it. See how, it, see how it goes." And no more soups, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things. I was like, "What do you? I thought that was no, it's not good." Okay, yeah, got it. Relate to that. We've got a little bit of Kate super strict, and I'm like always hungry, always. I wake yeah. up and one of the first things I say is I'm hungry and she says coffee. I'm like, let's yeah. chill out. Let's wait for dinner. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I'm, the, I'm on like the intermittent fasting plan. Uh, okay. Not really. I, I try not to be. I just like, you know, you grow up some people, you have the one meal that you've always embraced. But anyway, off topic. Off topic. I'm much more strict actually, which it, is odd. It, it is. But okay, back, back to y'all. So the last time, Sue, we spoke, you taught me the term dropping dimes. Mm-hmm. Drop yeah, we had to teach it to Catherine. Drop, 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 <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Is that really a common thing that people know what drop and dimes is if you're not a basketball player? Everybody like, like everybody knows that here at this summit. But regardless. Regardless. Megan, what yeah. is the soccer equivalent of drop and dimes? There's <sighs> got to be some kind of lingo or terminology that you Like can you just had two assists in a big game. And what would, you, what would someone say about Megan Rapinoe? You know, I They're like, she got the cap. <laughs> They're all the, that's the cap. The cap. My cap. Oh, yeah. it's cap thing. You played a game. <laughs> uh, it's not the same. Uh, no, it's not the same. She doesn't get it. Yeah. I don't think, so. you know, we have, we have a serious lack of, like, swag and, like, street culture in soccer. So it's just, like, there's not, there's nothing cool like that. It's, like, great assist there. Great, <laughs> great ball. Yeah, great, great ball. Great ball. Ball. Like that. Great ball. It's like, okay. that's well just, that's done. it. Yeah, we don't have... Yeah. I guess I got like start little awards for that. like you most should. dramatic interpretation of getting kicked in the shin. Yeah, you guys, do, yeah, yeah. You know, got to like play it up. Shin guards, big fallacy. They barely even wear them. Yeah, shin guards are stupid, but we have to wear them. Things you don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I would. I'm soccer. gonna start saying dropping dimes though, because right. I mean, it yeah. feels like it would translate feels cool. to the soccer world. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? You drop some dimes. Yeah. You dropped a dime. <laughs> Dropping them everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I know we talked last night about that. You guys at times go back and forth over like which sport is harder, which is more grueling, <laughs> in what way? Can constantly. you share some insight into how that conversation goes? <laughs> yeah. It's a it's constant stalemate. struggle of like, well, we run farther, and you're like, well, we do all the sliding, and it's like, well, there's the jumping, and then it's like, well, it's the hitting, and yeah. it's like, if I was younger, I'd disagree. beat you in a race. Yeah. Kind of thing. I do believe that. <laughs> there's Probably. no way to tell. I know. There's all no right. way to tell. But they're both, they're, they're equally hard. Oh, come on. <laughs> we, I love I last night you're like, why can they only play one game a week? Yeah, like, that's yeah. right. So I've learned a lot. I think she was already, like, I played soccer growing up, but I think after 10th grade, it probably gets a little more, I don't know. One would hope. Yeah. yeah. A little more intense after <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there's Just a lot I don't know. Stay the same. If you're in there in 10th grade, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's cool. But, well she, but she's, like, a huge basketball fan, so she kind of knows basketball. So there's stuff that I've learned about soccer that I'm like, wait, what? She's like, yeah, we can only play once a week. Like, two yeah, times a week is a lot. Yeah. I'm like, we just had a back-to-back -back on Monday and Tuesday, and I play Thursday, I know, and we fly on Friday, that. and I play Saturday. I'm like, I don't get it. Yeah. They can only yeah. play once a week. So that's where I'm like, ours must be, our individual game must be harder. <laughs> or you guys are not as tough. Hmm. One could argue. I don't think so, though. 
Okay, so I, I like because we because we did get to have spent some time together last night. So I'm like teeing you up to like do that, say that thing again. <laughs> that that. So I I asked you guys first. I was like, well, what would you guys talk about just if you were just going out to dinner? And one of the first thing Megan <laughs> said was like, well, Sue, you have a lot of inventions. I was like, what? And then you actually you do. did. I don't so have any patents though, so you can't. You know, I know. they're not actual inventions. But do you want to share them out loud, or no, are they no, too it's good? Fine. I'm okay. <laughs> No, a lot of times something will happen or something isn't going right or it's not, you know, and you're like, ah, oh, I wish I would. She doesn't just go, ah, oh. I'm just like, ah, oh, that's so annoying, it's not working. And then she's like, ooh, what did I do? <laughs> okay, so if it's this, then I could do this. And then it was like, then you have. Like, this necklace is too short. Okay, break the end of that necklace. Yeah. <laughs> Give me that thing, and I'm going to make it longer. Boom. Yeah. Next that happens. Under. <laughs> Which they sure at least they do one of your yeah, you please. Wh what about the Uber one? Yes. Oh, the Uber one's oh, the good. the Uber one's good. This is, but it's like. Someone from Uber needs to do this, but we had someone. You know, you like we, we, we actually had a fantastic oh. Uber X. Yep. Uber, you know, whatever. Da, 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 da. There needs to be like Uber guy, Uber G, and it's like I went out with my friends. I wasn't planning on having eight drinks, but I did. I was planning on having one. I have my car. I Uber G it, and an Uber driver comes with a guy, <laughs> and that guy drives your car home. Yeah. Right? Am yeah. I right? Yeah. Uber G. It's like, I'm sure they could pick up a better Uber name. accidental. Yeah. <laughs> really good. Uber whoops. Oops. <laughs> Uber happy hour. <laughs> Uber drunk. Wait, wait, um, share yeah. another one. Come on. Um, the ABA is a good one. That is much more well well thought out. Um, Not much more because the Uber one is thought out. But this one you've spent Yeah, I have insurance stuff time. that I haven't gotten into on the Uber one. Could oh, take yeah, it off your insurance. Thing. It's a long story. Uh, the, the, a ABA, the ABA, and you were like, American Basketball Association? Yeah, was, you I don't like, need to start another no. basketball association. No. I was like, the account before the account. That's the ABA. And it's basically like you go to dinner, and it's either, you can look at it two ways, like friendships or relationships, but you go to dinner, and let's say, so let's say the four of us went to dinner, and we had a fifth friend. And I've been that, fi I was that fifth friend for a very long time in my life. So I know what it's like when the check comes, and we want to split it, and these two put one card, and you put one card, and I get screwed, because <laughs> I'm putting that one card. So that's kind of how it all, like, developed. That's just one thing that happens. But what it really came down to was, like I said, either relationship or roommates, you have the account before the account. Like, you don't want the joint checking account. Yeah, that's you're not a lot. Ready for it's that a lot much. for roommates, obviously. That's like, we're not going to Very early. Too early for that. Yeah. Too early for that. You can't but be diving right into the <laughs> bank account, <laughs> having the shared statement. You're not touching my ruble. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so it's a way to put money into an account, the two of us, let's say, and we can, like, charge stuff to this account. But the, the key for me, I think, nowadays is you want to be able to, like, do it easy. So the way a Starbucks card works, like yeah, the way like you recharge it, it's gotta be yeah. all. And you can Venmo to this account. So rather than Megan pay for it, I Venmo her. We just both each month Venmo into this account, and then we use it. See, this is I think Uber and the ABA. ABA, you yeah. have a future when you're done with well, in a lot of ways, probably when you're done with the basketball. Yeah. Plenty <laughs> of things you could do. <laughs> you have but at least one thing you can do. Yeah. Now there's that. one thing that we've pinpointed. So good. Well, and this is when we come to one of the more important parts of our podcast naturally free cookies so you got to give it up what are yeah. your favorite cookies do you guys well soup oh. kind of understands the parameters yeah. Yeah. Is kate gets I really up something similar okay it's well should i then i'll get yeah. should i give the parameters first yeah oh okay you need yeah. parameters. does it come from a box you can't yeah. just pick this random cookie in seattle that you once had at, you a guy said? at a shop like oh well like oh, josie's look, make bakery makes okay, an amazing no we need we need to be a standard cookie no wait this is a test what do you think i said yeah oh Oh my God! Yeah, the Macklesmore. Boom. Yes. Okay. Yeah. There's a specific cookie in I was Seattle. Like, is this a trick? This is yeah, the Macklesmore. Macklesmore. It's like heaven on a. On what a is it? Cracker. I guess you yeah, can you describe it, even though I've objected as. Kate's the gonna best get really uptight. Chocolate, cookie. chocolate chip it. cookie that has a graham cracker imprinted into it. Then it has some marshmallow thing. Then it has a chocolate. piece of chocolate, and it's melted. Melted. It is it's so bomb. So Unreal. it's part of the 20% of your Yeah, diet. Yeah, okay. it takes up the whole 20%. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, are we going to Hello Robin tonight? I really want it. Can we please go? So favorite from a standard cookie list. And this would wait. be <laughs> a standard cookie list. Um, but wait, can Sue guess what yours is now? Oh, standard I mean, I feel like cookie? we got to make this yeah. fair. Yeah. Standard. I know what you would get at Hello Robin. <laughs> this lavender thing. <laughs> oh, that is good. It's like lavender chocolate chip. That sounds amazing. Fancy. Yeah, what's your standard? <sighs> I mean, a good, a, just a good solid chocolate chip is great. I do like like a Mexican flourless because mm -hmm. it's kind of chewy. Also at Hello Robin. Yeah, that's at Hello Robin okay. too. 
And Sue, we already know yours, but you could share for the crowd. Yeah, again. talk to it. Slice okay. and bake? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, slice and bake. Slice and bake. Preferably Pillsbury. Yeah. Thanks to Beautiful. our amazing guests, Sue Bird, Megan Rapino. Thank you guys for rapping with us.